So yeah, I bought an X106 and I bought it just to make this video and I'm going to return it once I'm done filming this. Maybe I do another video. I don't know, we will have to see. I don't really need to review this camera. We all have seen it. It's the X105 just with a new sensor and IBIS and a little bit better AF, but overall it's the same camera. But I want to give it a real fair try. I want to use it out in the field doing some street photography and I want to share my thoughts and tell you what I think about it. So yeah, let's go. You know, Fujifilm should have named this camera the X100C. C for made in China, C for clickbait, or C for cringe. Cringe because I cringe when I see all these all these titles. What is this? Is this camera worth it in 2024? Do you really need it? Why you need it? This camera saves photography. This camera made me a better photographer already after six days of the launch and nobody has this camera yet, but this guy somehow is a better photographer now because he had the camera for six days. Or why I won't upgrade to the X106. Like, who cares? And yes, this camera's beautiful. Just look at it. It's so pretty, especially with all these accessories. Shout out to Square Hood. I'm not hating on this camera, yeah? The camera's great. It's fantastic. It's an awesome, all-around, all-inclusive package. Um, I would recommend this to anyone. Maybe even over the GS3, because I, I feel like this is the more complete package, you know? And it's weather-sealed. But for me, this camera leaves a little bit of a bad aftertaste and it probably has to do with all the hype and craze around this camera. I'm not sure if I want to be seen with this camera anymore. I know it sounds stupid, but it has become so popular, which is good for Fujifilm. But, you know, now the question is, are they catering towards the influencers, the TikTokers, the Instagram models, or just people who want to, want to carry something fashionable? Or are they going to focus on the photographers? And this camera is still, of course, a great camera for photographers. No doubt about it. But this release feels underwhelming, feels lazy. I feel like they just wanted to sell more cameras because it has been sold out everywhere. And then they just put in the new sensor and IBIS, which is great, of course, it's great. But what about the viewfinder? Can we have a little bit of a bigger viewfinder? I mean, this is the heart of the camera. And I use the optical viewfinder a lot, or I would use it a lot if I would keep this camera. I really wanted to see some surprises, especially because I started my YouTube channel with the X100F. I totally fell in love with this uh, camera system, series. I had the best time ever shooting street on the X100F. And then later I remembered that I'm still a Ricoh GR ambassador and I have to go back to Ricoh. No, of course I went back uh, gladly because 28 is more, suits me better. But I kept looking at the X100 series because I was curious where they're heading and I really wanted to see something new. That's all. Okay, let's go into the city, take some photos and then I share my thoughts about this camera after using it for two days. I swear there's nobody here, but already I got some looks. There was a little group of three guys and they looked at my camera. Damn it, TikTok. So I'm approaching uh, the beach slowly and hopefully the swimmers are still there. And I want to show something because in London I photographed something similar. These are also swimmers that meet uh, in Hyde Park. And this was very early in winter, 7 or 8 a.m., all shot on film, HP5. And this one is uh, with the Ricoh GS3, but the rest is all film. And yeah, these kind of images I hope to get today. Let's go. Ta-da, we are at the beach. Okay, I don't see any swimmers. Am I too late? Is this not the right spot or what? So I think this is the group and I just missed it because nobody's swimming. So that was a little disappointing. What do we do now? Let's just explore the beach a little bit more and maybe go back to the city. Man, I really feel strange holding this camera. I feel like everyone is looking at me from 100 miles away because I have this camera. 
maybe I should have gotten the black one, but I like the silver much better, but it's starting to become too obvious. So warum starten wir Leute an? Weil die Leute irgendwas haben, so was mich begeistert oder abschreckt, keine Ahnung. We are not staring. We just like to keep an eye on you. So, I'm on my way back to the car. And the beach is nice, but to be real honest, carrying around this camera plus my GoPro, it just draws too much attention to me and I didn't feel like it. So, I'm going to go to the city and try my luck doing some street photography. But one thing that we could talk about now is um, the X106 now has uh, different aspect ratios because I really like the 4x3 aspect ratio. 5x4 I use a lot on my Nikon D850 and because this camera now has the resolution to allow you to crop more, you could shoot these tighter aspect ratios and still have enough uh, megapixels. For example, 4x3 gives you 35 megapixels and 5x4 is 33, so that's plenty. And the frame lines in the viewfinder also adjust to the aspect ratio, so that's kind of cool and uh, maybe I will shoot 4x3 today, I don't know. Because it also gives you probably more of a 40mm field of view. Could be interesting to try that out now. So I just came back from a coffee shop where I had a little break and that was a really nice scene. There was a guy sitting in front of me, he was lighting up a cigarette and then uh, this is a location where a lot of uh, birds are flying uh, in the sky. And when I arrived at the coffee shop there were thousands of birds flying in the air so I thought okay this could be a nice background and then if I have someone in the foreground this could potentially be a nice photograph. And I was waiting and waiting and had my camera ready, I was drinking and chilling, relaxing, you know, I have time and then nothing would happen. The birds would not show up anymore. The sky was completely empty and I really wanted to frame the guy in front of me in this 4x3 aspect ratio and then with the birds flying over him. That could have been a nice shot. But nothing happened and I waited at least 30 minutes and then the guy in front of me uh, left. So <laughs> I also had to leave and I didn't have the patience uh, to wait for another guy or another subject. So I came back to my car, another fail of the day. <laughs> um, but this gives me a good opportunity to share my settings, how I set up the X106, because maybe this could be interesting for some of you. And I took a little bit of inspiration here from the photographer Sage uh, So Here, which I discovered by uh, watching a frame lines episode on YouTube. Um, they were interviewing her and showing this new book and when I heard the concept of the book or what it was about, about passing time, I immediately ordered the book without even watching the interview yet. And it arrived yesterday and it's a beautiful book, beautiful photographs, all black and white film. And what was interesting in that interview was that they were talking about digital cameras and she said that she really prefers optical viewfinders. She had never tried any X-Pro or X100 camera before. So I kind of thought, you know, how would she set up this camera if she could travel back when she was photographing the, her book and ha ha had this camera with her. So Sage, I guess if you stumbled upon this uh, video, uh, these settings might help you set up your X100 one day, I don't know. <laughs> so for black and white, of course, we have to use Acros. Acros Film Simulation is really awesome, I love it. And then we will use the optical viewfinder, nothing else. I use this little hybrid LCD display window in the corner. And the reason I'm doing that is because I use that to, for manual focusing. So I have the camera on manual. And then what I do is I shoot in across black and white. And then I make sure that uh, focus peaking is on, on red high. And the reason I want high is because I want to see, I want to see red in the corner of the frame. And it's a really cool way to quickly see if you're in focus or not. And then I zoom in by using this back uh, wheel. I zoom in to the maximum amount. 
And the reason I'm doing that is because I only want to see what my focus point is seeing. So when I look through the OVF, I have a little focus frame in the middle, a little box that uh, shows me where my focus point is. And then in the bottom right corner, I can see what this focus point is seeing. And then all I have to do is use this focus ring and turn it until the bottom right corner gets very red. That means I'm in focus. And there are a few more things you have to do in, in the menu. First of all, you have to set this focus ring to from non-linear to linear because non-linear will dynamically adjust how fast you focus and this is you don't you want linear because then it's acts more like a mechanical focus then i also reverse the focusing direction so kind of mimicking what leica lenses do so for example this would be infinity and this would be close focus and this works great with the focus uh, distance indication here you see it's set to, I can't read it, but it's here. And if I turn this focus ring, you see that it turns in the direction that I'm focusing to, which is just a more natural thing to do. So that means I can focus to infinity without looking into the viewfinder. I can just turn, turn this uh, focus ring to this, in this direction. And then it should be in focus. No, it's not. It's beyond infinity, unfortunately. But then, you know, you can just quickly go a little bit back and then you see it's red. You take a photo and you know you are in focus. And then if I want to use zone focusing, I would uh, look at the back LCD and set my focus distance uh, based on what I need for the scene. Let's say five meters here. And then I can adjust the aperture and see how much, how much will be in focus, what my focus range will be. And then I don't need to touch the focus ring anymore. I can just shoot. If I want to be very precise, I look through the viewfinder and just check my little screen on the bottom again. And then in many focusing mode, of course, the shutter button is not focusing anymore. So you have to use uh, this back button for focusing, the AEL AFL button, which is another very convenient way to focus. And then once the focusing frame is green, you know you're in focus and then just take a photo. And by the way, you don't need to use manual focusing or back button focusing um, all the time. You can also quickly switch back to continuous AF. And then I set my uh, continuous AF to tracking. So I have the middle focus point and wherever I point to, it will track uh, my subject and then I can compose and take my photo. Although I have to say this lens is quite noisy. It does make a lot of noise when you use continuous AF. And it's also hunting a little bit. It does a little bit of back and forth, which I think has to do with the lens not being optimized for smooth and fast focusing because I have a Fujifilm XS20 and I think that is a little bit better, more confident. Or here, right now, I just did it. I'm focusing on my screen and it's, it's hunting. It's going back and forth, even, even though it's, there's a lot of contrast in the frame. So AF tracking, it works, but I would be careful. I would always take multiple, multiple photos just in case, because sometimes you would get photos that are not in focus. But for, for street shooting, when you stop down the lens to f8 or whatever, then uh, you can still use focus tracking and it should get the job done. And I don't know if I talked about this already, that I really enjoy 40mm and I hoped for a 40mm crop mode in this camera. And unfortunately this camera doesn't have that, but someone on Instagram told me that there is uh, this uh, feature called uh, sports finder mode, which does crop the image slightly. You also get frame lines and then you have roughly 43mm. Uh, full frame equ equivalent. So pretty close to 40 millimeter. And I got really excited that that's a possibility. But the downside is you can only use it with the EVF or the LCD screen. And it's not available for the, o for the OVF. And I set the Q button to activate sports finder mode. So here you can see it gives me 43 millimeter frame lines, which is cool. But I want this in the OVF. So Fujifilm, please, Give us a firmware update. Please allow sports finder mode or a 40 millimeter crop mode in the OVF. That would be amazing. Okay, last little customization I did to this camera is uh, this front lever has a button and I assigned the view mode function to this button. What Fujifilm did away with, um, which the X100F still had, was um, a view mode button where you can switch between OVF and LCD screen or EVF and LCD screen or both. But since the X100V, we don't have that anymore. So you have to go into the menu and change your preference. 
but you can assign view mode to other custom uh, buttons. So I did that with this button here on the front. So when I press it, I can quickly switch between, you know, OVF, EVF, uh, LCD, and stuff like that. And lastly, this little button here, I have it set to uh, face tracking or face AF, eye detection on and off. So I'm filming on the X106 right now and this is Reala Ace, one of one new film simulation, which is also going to come to existing Fujifilm cameras, such as my XS20. And I'm really excited because I like I like Eterna. But Reala Ace, so far I like it. And if I don't need to grade my footage in post, that's something I really appreciate. So how does it look? Reala Ace. Okay, so I'm driving home. Today was really not my day. Man, it was so hard taking photos and I think this camera, the X106, is just too popular. I got so many eyeballs today, especially from hipsters. It must be the camera because when I'm out with my Ricoh or my Nikon ZF, I don't get these stairs, you know? Germans like to stare anyways, but if you carry a silver camera, I think that just makes it worse. And I'm sure a lot of people recognize the camera because it's now so popular. So I'm not going to end this video here because I'm not in the best mood and I wanna, I wanna be fair, you know? If I would do this, end this video now and give you my final conclusion, then it won't be very positive because it will be based on my experience today. So uh, yeah, I see you wherever I'm going to film next. Bye bye. Also ich meine, ich habe ehrlich tatsächlich, ich vermisse schon so eine, eine, eine Dings hier, eine richtige. Doch, der Autofokus ist schon nice. Der ist auch schon ziemlich schnell. Hey, na? Was ja. geht? Hi. Hi. Du gerade, was Hi. Wolltest du nicht auch mal eine Zeit lang die haben? Oder immer noch? Die alte. Voll geil. Voll, voll nice. Bist du schon kein Bock mehr? Alright, we are back home. Um, I'm here in my little forest. And I wanted to go into the city again and take some more pictures because I didn't feel like I had enough images to showcase what this camera can do. But then some things happened that prevented me from doing that. For example, one of our trees here fell down and it fell onto another tree on my neighbor's property. And I have to get rid of it today. Never used a chainsaw before, so I'm a little scared and I had to do some testing and some things didn't work out. I have to go and buy some stuff for it, so today I couldn't even finish that. <laughs> Shit, I can't believe I did it. Uh, so that's why I look like this and that's why we are filming outside here. I have like 30 minutes and then I have to bring my wife to the train station. And as I said in the beginning, I'm going to return this camera. I have like two or three days left, um, but I'm definitely going to return it. Initially, I secretly thought that I could convince myself to keep it because I honestly really like it. It's an enjoyable camera. I enjoyed my time with it, besides the looks that I'm getting on the street with the silver version. But it is a fun camera and it felt nostalgic using it. But I have some new insights and actually I have some things to share with you, some tests I did yesterday that I'm sure nobody on YouTube has talked about it yet and it really surprised me. It's kind of a shocker. It will definitely sound very biased coming from me, Rico Imaging. <laughs> um, but you will, you will be surprised, I'm sure. Now, before we talk about these shocking uh, results that I found out yesterday, let's, let's talk a little bit more about what I personally really like about this camera compared to the X100V or the X100F, because honestly, I only have a lot of experience with the F and not the V. But the X106 is definitely a very snappy camera. I like the Reala Ace uh, film simulation, although I would personally add a little bit of a green tint into it because it does look a little bit too reddish to me. But it's a very pleasing film simulation and I can't wait to have it on my XS20 soon for filming these videos. Uh, I like how it looks, I very much like how it looks, although I really think you should get the black one if you are in Germany, uh, if you are in Japan or a very camera friendly country. 
uh, for sure go with the silver because I think the silver looks overall prettier, but that's personal taste. What else can I say? The grip is fine. I didn't feel the need to use a half case. Uh, I also got a thumb rest, which I honestly don't really need, but it's good to have it. By the way, shout out again to Square Hood for sending me these nice accessories. Um, I will put the link in the description and um, Thomas from Square Hood, he really has the best accessories in my opinion for the Fujifilm X100. So definitely check it out. Oh, and I have to defend the battery life because I was a little worried because this camera is using the older generation batteries and I was never really satisfied with the battery life of my older Fujifilm cameras. And this one has the same battery, so I was a little worried, but I never needed more than one battery for a day of shooting. Uh, I used the optical viewfinder a lot and I found that after a full day of shooting I might want to swap the battery just in case but the battery for me lasts a day. Maybe you need two for a very productive day. Get, get three just in case but um, the battery life is not bad. Yeah and this is where the positive aspects for me end here. Uh, I have some downsides to share. Uh, by the way, if you're happy with this camera and it's, it's perfect for what you do, all power to you. I don't want to trash this camera, you know, I think it's an amazing value. Get it and you will be happy. But I have my own needs and my shooting style also evolved. I have different needs. Okay, first of all, my first impression with Fujifilm and releasing this camera was, oh, they just give, gave it a spec bump and, you know, it felt lazy. But then I thought, maybe this camera doesn't need more upgrades, right? Faster AF, IBIS, more megapixels, seems like a good enough upgrade. But then uh, I discovered something uh, very interesting. So yesterday I was taking pictures of my son in the back of uh, back seat of my car and I had my GS3X with me and I thought, hmm, let's do a side-by-side -side comparison test. Let's shoot these lenses wide open and from the same distance. And then I was so surprised because I'm going to show you some examples here because I posted it on, uh, on Instagram. A lot of people didn't believe me and accused me of misfocusing the X100 uh, 6, but uh, that it was definitely in focus. The GS3X with 24 megapixels has more details, is overall sharper, clearer, a little bit better micro contrast as well compared to this camera, the X106. The X106 has 40 megapixels. It should absolutely out resolve any anything you can take with the GS3 or GS3X but to my surprise the GS3X files were more detailed and that is almost funny because this camera is more expensive than the previous model but Fujifilm really does promote this camera as a high-end compact camera it has more resolution they say you know you have better cropping, cropping capabilities but after this little test yesterday, I'm not sure if I would even count that as a plus because if the full resolution of this camera is not even as clear as a 24 megapixel camera with a very good lens, then I have a feeling that Fujifilm should probably have, they should have upgraded this lens and made it suitable for 40 megapixel sensors because it feels like this lens isn't up for the task. And I will include a little side-by-side -side test here shooting this camera at 2.8 and my GS3X at 2.8 and you can see here now what the differences are but wide open the GS3X definitely smoked <laughs> the Fujifilm and I know it's really biased coming from me but uh, I didn't expect that to be honest because I really enjoyed using the 4x3 aspect ratio on this camera and still having like 35 megapixels so that was a little disappointing I think it's also the combination of X-Trans, the X-Trans sensor plus the lens not resolving the 40 megapixels. I know a lot of Fujifilm people will be angry at me right now, but you can do the, set, do the test yourself. I'm not cheating here. I'm just showing you my, my results. And you know, the Nikon ZF is, this is a camera I bought a pre-ordered when it was announced. And I have another Nikon camera. So for me, uh, this has become a second camera body and also my street photography camera, documentary camera. And I absolutely love it. I'm showing you this because this camera is here in Germany, it's like 100, uh, 1800 euro. It's quite expensive. And this one is like 2400 ish. I don't remember. Personally, I would look at these two cameras and not compare this to the GS3, for example, um, because this is much bigger. You need a jacket pocket. You cannot put this in your pants pocket. So I think these two cameras are 
the cameras we should compare, which I'm not going to do here because there will be other people doing it and I don't have the time for it right now. But let me tell you this. The Nikon ZF definitely has the more premium feel, brass dials. It has much better AF tracking. I was actually surprised how, how inconfident, unconfident this AF, uh, AFC is. I will show you a little clip here. I filmed this for my Instagram followers and shared my results on Instagram. It is hunting a lot. And to be really honest, I missed a lot of shots because the camera would focus to the background suddenly. I mean, maybe this can be fixed by firmware updates, but I did the same test on the Nikon ZF with this lens, 40 f2, and it is like, it's like a night and day difference. The, the Nikon would always stick to the subject, regardless of how fast I would move, and X106 would always hunt and struggle to keep up. Now, this will be no problem if you stop down the lens and shoot in bright lighting conditions, but if you want to shoot wide open, I would make sure that you take multiple shots of the same scene just in case. Because I cannot trust this camera to, to give me a sharp result just by taking one shot. On this camera, I can trust, trust it completely. Yeah, love this camera so much. And if I would not have this camera, maybe I would consider getting this one, but I have too many cameras. <laughs> Last few thoughts before I uh, end this video and send this camera back. Um, for me, there's also another huge thing that you should consider, and that is that this camera is a camera for people who are passionate about photography, who like to experience the camera. What I mean by that is you have the aperture dial, other dials, and the OVF, EVF option. This little hybrid window as well. You can use the screen tilting up or down. You have a joystick, it does everything, which is great, but it's also, it can also be a downside because, you know, oh, I, I forgot to mention one. After this, I have another important thing to mention that probably no one is mentioning, but let me continue. So this is a camera that you want to play with. And if you like that, then it's great. You know, you have, you can enjoy this camera tactile experience. But when I compare it to the shooting experience using my GS3 or GS3X, um, it's more focused to, to one way of shooting. You know, I use the back screen. I have no, other, no viewfinder, right? And it's very simple. I don't, have, I don't have good AF tracking on the Ricoh. So that's why I always have to use the middle AF point and snap focus. On this camera, I have many options. The AFC is good enough to get the job done, but it's also not the best. And then I can do back button focusing. You know, it gives you all these options, so you always have to think about, you know, should I use AFC, should I use back button focusing, should I use single AF on, with the shutter button? So you play more with the camera than actually focusing on the photography aspect. For some people, this might be completely the opposite. Maybe you just set it up in one way and then you keep the settings and just enjoy your photography. You know, then you have great willpower and dis discipline. But a lot of people, I think, will be fiddling with all these levers and viewfinder options, you know, and it, it's, it's fun, but it also can slow you down. And that's why I appreciate cameras that are very niche and do one thing very well. Okay, and then uh, lastly, uh, this is huge for street photographers or people who do documentary or photojournalism. I often like to, um, on all my other cameras, uh, like to half press my shutter button and then take photos while still keeping my finger half pressed on the shutter button. This allows me to first um, lock my focus. Uh, maybe it's AFC, then, it's keep, then it keeps tracking, or if it's AFS, then it keeps the focus where it was first originally focused on. This allows me to you know, have subjects coming into the frame, doesn't matter, the focus is still where I want it to be, and I can you know, take photos, take photos, take photos. And with my Ricoh GR, for example, I always do that. And secondly, I also use this to save my exposure because I use um, some automatic exposure mode sometimes and by half pressing my shutter button, I can save the, the current exposure. And it does work on this camera, but not as well as other cameras. And that has to do with the shutter button not having a very clear tactile separation between full press and half press. It's so easy to fire up some shots here accidentally or 
you think you're half pressing but then you actually are not half pressing so you have to do this whole process again and focus again or save your exposure again which creates uh, inconsistencies and is a little slower and on my GR3 and on my Nikon ZF I can really feel my finger resting on the button and it's easy for me to then hold this position and I noticed that when you use these uh, soft shutter release buttons on, on the shutter button it makes it even harder to half press and keep it half pressed so I removed my uh, soft shutter release button and I feel like it's easier without that but it's still very easy especially when you want to be fast like now I'm sitting and relaxed you know I can feel it it's very sensitive but I can do it but when I'm out on the street or a very busy hectic environment I miss a lot of opportunities and I take more shots accidentally accidentally because it's just not pronounced enough for me that might not be an issue for you but for me it's not pr pronounced enough so here for example you can actually hear the half press sound like click and it's half press now I take a shot now I take a shot I can be very fast but the shutter button stops right before full press so half pressing is very easy so wherever I am I can hold my my exposure and chat, 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 take my photos and here I often would accidentally do a full press and then I have to oh readjust oh what uh, here okay now because it's like a half of a millimeter or something like that so um, that's something you notice I guess when you use cameras a lot in the field and uh, in the hectic environments so maybe this could be useful to some of you it was to somehow it was totally fine with me with the X100F when I was when I was using that camera in the past so maybe it's just a matter of getting used to it it is a downside because I switch between my Nikon and my Ricoh so many times and I don't have this issue but switching between these two cameras I always have to adjust and warm up with using the X100 6 okay I think I gotta go uh, I hope this was useful to you to be honest in the, in the middle of filming this video I felt like I questioned myself you know why am I doing this video just for clicks and honestly a part of me did it for clicks you know let's let's be let me be honest with you guys I bought this camera just to make this video uh, and to also be a little bit nostalgic because I used to really love this camera I still like this camera but it's not really at the moment not working for me and I hope and I think this can be useful to some of you watching I think it's always good if someone is sharing also some downsides and you know Tell, tells people why it didn't work for them because most reviews I watch are mostly positive like nothing is wrong with this camera and, and I also didn't want to make this video to tell you you know what what's wrong about this camera uh, it's not my goal to trash Fujifilm I love my Fujis Fujifilm is my video uh, system and I'm going to continue using them so I have nothing against Fujifilm but this camera it's not a big upgrade for me in terms of the user experience. So keep that in mind and enjoy your X106 or keep using your X100V. There's nothing wrong with that. And I'm going to keep using my Nikon ZF. And you know, because I tried to convince myself to like this camera or keep this camera, I couldn't, I cannot just send this back and not treat myself. So I thought, okay, how can I make my Nikon ZF more compact and fun for street photography? And I just ordered a Vogtländer 40mm f2.8 Helia lens for Leica M mount and black paint. I bought it second hand for 399 euros and really looking forward to try that on my ZF because that's something I also can get on this camera. Manual focusing works but it's, it's not quite there yet, you know. If you're coming from a Leica or any manual focusing lens experience, you don't really get that experience here. So. Um, maybe I do a video of, on, on this 40 uh, millimeter lens in the future but that's what I'm going to do as a gift to myself for for having to return this beautiful camera by the way a big camera bag video is coming soon where I'm going to show you all my camera bags including this Wotancraft Messenger 7 liter pilot bag and some camera straps like this one like this one here or this one here um, so yeah, stay tuned for the next video. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.